Hey guys, and with me today I have Brian van Bakel from Open Source ICT Solutions. Welcome, please do a brief introduction. Yeah, well, great, thank you. In, indeed, Brian van Bakel, Open Source ICT Solutions, working as um, CEMEX trainer, CEMEX consultant, and of course, CEMEX partner. Uh, as you know, we are based in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. but also in the United States and the United Kingdom. Oh, so, okay, so you're all over the place. All over the world. Yeah. You're working only with Zabbix and you provide the whole set of services? Yeah, that's Support. the only way to make a living. Because, oh. yeah, the product is open source. Yes, of course. So we yeah, can't yeah. sell the product and we are selling services. So mm -hmm. support, uh, consultancy, of course, trainings. Mm -hmm. Turnkeys. Uh, turnkeys. Upgrades. Yes, and I'm a bit hesitant to upgrades because most of the times customers well come with an upgrade uh, from version 1.8 till <laughs> 6, which oh. is interesting. It's yes, interesting. definitely uh, an experience, right? Oh man, yeah. Yeah, it's always great fun, but only after the project it's great fun. During the project, project it's a bit messy, but yeah. Maybe you can, um, so since we're talking about upgrades, so let's kind of focus on different parts of of Zabbix services, and let's start with upgrades. So you said sometimes, probably in rare cases, customers wish to do an upgrade from a really old version. Mm -hmm. And recently, I myself, on my test environments, I've done upgrades from version four, version five. Yeah. I've done the primary key, optional upgrade for version six, um, and everything went really smooth. Those were small instances, yeah. but it was quick, smooth. The, the documentation, I think, covers it nicely. We have videos for it, mm -hmm. all good. But with those older versions, What's the, what, what could be the potential um, kind of pitfalls if, be, for example, someone's sitting on version 2.0? Yeah, the, the, the biggest problem um, is the version of the operating system, because probably you have to upgrade that one. Mm -hmm. Once you upgraded the operating system, it will be the database that needs to be upgraded. Right, yeah. That's a bit more interesting. And then the hard part is done, actually, because the Zebix upgrade is, well, flawless in most of the cases. If you haven't probably uh, modified the tables. Of, of course, yeah. of course. If you start messing in the database, then the upgrade is a, a bumpy ride. Yeah. But if it's a stock database, it should be fine. Mm -hmm. So actually, most issues don't stem directly from Zabbix, no, just the underlying Absolutely. underlying components. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's even true nowadays, right, with CentOS 8 and everything and people mm -hmm. kind of trying to move away from it. It's still an issue. Uh, which operating system do I select? Do I stick? I probably don't want to stick with CentOS 8, right? In my opinion, no. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and then I have to pick something else. What would you, by the way, recommend? That's a very hard question because I don't want to reward um, Red Hat for what I did, but still I prefer <laughs> that one. Yeah. I mean, if you're rolling with Red Hat, then you might as well continue rolling with Red Hat if it's your company sort of policy, right? Yeah. But there are tons of alternatives out there. We support them. We recently added uh, support, official support for packages, for I think Oracle Linux and Rocky Linux. If and I'm not Alma mistaken. Linux. And Alma, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, Oracle was there, it was Alma and Rocky. Yeah. yeah. But in the end, it, it really doesn't matter for us because if you are using Ubuntu or Debian, that's also fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Personal preference, Red Hat, but yeah, if, if someone in the company, in the, in the customer company, uh, is more experienced with the other distributions, we just go with that one. Yeah, essentially it depends what you feel comfortable yeah. with, right? The package managers, everything else, uh, what you same feel. Same thing goes with the databases, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that's about the upgrades. So we've talked about some technical things here, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe we have some people watching us that have just recently started using Zabbix, or maybe their managers, or you know, mm -hmm. people that don't know it in depth and they don't know the whole upgrade process and things like that. So there's trainings to help you out with that, to help you set up underlying components, right? Yeah. Like database, the web server for the front end, mm -hmm. everything else. Um, and let's say I'm I'm a new user of Zabbix. Is um, the tool is free, of course. Yep. But how would I go about the training? At which point should I consider doing the official Zabbix training? And at what level should I start? Do I need to go through a, the user? Do I need to do one day trainings? When do I need to do it? What's, what, what would be the workflow from your side? Yeah, well, when you just start with Zabbix, uh, you might get overwhelmed with uh, how broad and how flexible the product is. And then it really depends if you're a manager or just looking at the data go for the user training. Like the NOC team, you don't modify yeah. much, yeah. you open the dashboard, you wish to know the navigation. Yeah. And then the user training is just great, learning the potential, 
seeing how to get your data, working with problems, etc., etc. And it's a one-day course, so it won't Just take that day. much time. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that one is great for that purpose. Um, if you want to configure Zebix, specialist. And probably not the first day that you start uh, using Zebix. Play around with it a week, perhaps two weeks, and then the course. It's, it's helping the process during the training. And mm -hmm. uh, well, y you know you are a trainer yourself. On Monday, we start with nothing, literally yes. nothing. Empty, <laughs> empty virtual machine, essentially. Mo Monday yeah. afternoon, we have an up and running Zebix server, yeah. and then the fun starts, because we start configuring whatever check you can think of. And that is and really we go through a everything, every item type, essentially. A really yeah. a kickstart to your knowledge. I mean, the documentation is great. Mm -hmm. time consuming to learn everything and see the options. You don't have the structure there, right? I yeah. mean, yeah, the documentation is great and we keep, uh, from my side, I'm praising myself probably <laughs> right now in the company that I work at, but there are tons of community materials now, blog yeah. posts, you've done some yourself, of right? Yeah, yeah, YouTube videos, community videos, I've seen you participate in like the community videos and interviews that we have there. And it's all great, but the trainings, you need the structure. You need to have the starting point and the yeah. goal. Yeah, with the training, we are really guiding you through the process. And if you are stuck at, at some point, we take your hand, manage to get through it. And that's, well, kickstarting your knowledge, but also helping you uh, understanding the product more. Mm -hmm. Because the product is really, really flexible. Yeah, and, and another benefit from my side, I think, which, and I know there are like, you can find articles, uh, like an official ones from community, and you can sort of treat that as a training and things like that. One benefit that I find really useful, and it's always fun, is that during the trainings, a person, a trainee may ask you, hey, but here's my environment, and here's some my use case that's relevant to what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Let's discuss that. And you can do that. You can discuss their yeah. essentially use case in the context of what you're covering. From the trainer perspective, that's the best part of the trainings. Yes. Because you always get the different views and the opinions and you, you look yeah. at different environments and start discussing the, the, the best approach there. I really love that interaction. And it's also beneficial for us, I think, as a company because if something isn't optimal, like for a use case, for example, you yeah. don't understand it, you hear it, you see it and you're like, okay, you're right. We need to create a feature request and maybe improve on a specific thing. Yeah, you, you can actually see um, during most trainings, I'm creating feature requests and things that, that should be changed, with, which I call a bug, which probably is not really a bug, but... It uh, depends, yeah. Could yeah. be a feature, right? right? Yeah. I'm not going to comment <laughs> on that one. But, no, but during the trainings, you always get those new insights uh, yes. from both the trainer and the attendees. And that's, mm -hmm. that's really nice. Yeah, it, it, goes, it goes both ways. Yeah. Essentially, and nowadays, I mean, with uh, the online trainings, with, with COVID and everything else, um, online trainings, of course, have gained prominence. We mm. do less on-prem. Everyone, I think, all over the world does less on-prem. People even work fully remote, so of course, they take trainings remotely. And can you maybe talk about Zabbix training? So online versus on-prem. Could you talk about pros and cons of both of those as a trainer? So m March 2020. Um, uh, or a bit later, we migrated into the online trainings mm -hmm. and I was really skeptic about it. I mean, I was completely used to in-person trainings, really happy with it. And uh, I still remember the first online training and I was like, this is going to be a mess, but we got to do something. I mean, we can't stop giving trainings and not teaching people again. Two years later, I think the quality is roughly the same. Uh, the interaction is a bit different. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the main cons, I think, is that the attendee is uh, easier distracted during the training uh, because yeah. you're not in a, in a closed environment. Uh, but, but the quality of the training, roughly the same, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, benefits, of course, no traveling. Yes, both for mostly for the trainer and yeah. trainees. Depends if you're traveling to their location, then it's it's fine. Yeah. yeah. But mostly, yeah, I, I agree. Like, like we discussed before the interview, no jet lag, right? Yeah. Costs less and, and for not only trainers, but sometimes trainees. More efficient, yeah. Yeah, more efficient. And, and usually you're more flexible with your time because you don't have to travel. The Absolutely. trainees, they don't have to travel to yeah. the office. They can do it directly from home. But of course, there are also pros, pros to on-prem, on right? Yeah, of course. Um, the vibe when you're giving a training on premises is so great. It's always fun to, to sit there and to, well, be in that atmosphere of learning things, of, of showing things. And then 
Um, I'm pretty sure you know it, that aha moments during yes, the training from a yes, very experienced yes. user. That's so nice to, to experience. Yeah, sometimes um, it's like uh, you, you're both being trained. He's training you in a way and you're yeah, training the person. And uh, yeah. So th that's what I really miss in the online trainings, of course. Yeah, and sometimes uh, if I think you're training, for example, a com uh, employees of a company, mm -hmm. of a single company, then it's really nice seeing uh, their only friends or acquaintances and you can see them sort of interact with themselves, helping one another, right? Just that's looking cool over thing. your shoulder, trying to, trying to help you out. That's sort of like a, like a school-like or university-like yeah. atmosphere. And then you have, of course, the, the, the lunch or the dinner or whatever together when you talk about Zabbix or non-Zabbix things. So that's, that's, of course, the social aspect yeah. of it is, yeah. is what's missing out. But yeah, I, I think there's no definite one is better than the other, right? N no, it really depends on the situation, on the attendees, on, on the company, etc. So there's no good or bad. Uh, mm -hmm. There are completely different methods, I think. And uh, lastly, I've talked to the, about this topic to some of the other uh, people that I've been interviewing here. And I'd like to ask you about open source, the kind of paradigm and opinion about open source in general. So you're from Netherlands, and how do people over there, I think the Netherlands is generally treated as a very progressive, sort of ahead of its time, location, region, and uh, what is the feeling of, about open source, for example, in governmental organizations, if you are, are aware of it, in large corporations? It's kind of funny because the government is, uh, um applying a policy you use open source and if you are not using it you have to explain why not so that that's really great that that whole thinking of open source is, is just great i think but does it um, change okay government but what about for example private companies is it the same yeah, or different no it's different the private companies were using already open source quite a lot i mean in the end we are dutch so if we have to pay for something that's going to be problematic uh yeah let's just face it um but, but still what we uh, were thinking, what, what most of the people were thinking about open source is that it is only community managed, which is problematic with, with a lot of products because the maintainer stops and then yeah, the product is useless. Yeah. And the beauty with Zabbix is that it is maintained actively by a commercial company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're here, you're in the offices, of course, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm an employee of a company. I'm not some just random guy from, from the street working with an open source product. Yeah. So th that's stability, uh, reliability, but also um, adding flexibility because the community can just talk to the developers yes. and try to influence it. And of course, too many influences is, is not the best thing, but it is a, a completely different way of thinking about a product uh, compared to closed source. Mm -hmm. And in the Netherlands, uh, yeah, we kind of like that approach. Uh, a lot of companies are using open source products um, yeah, because of the financial benefits, but also because you can see what the source code is doing. And the transparency, right? Yeah. I've already said before, but security being the issue that it is nowadays due to political climate and everything else, some security breaches in the past, right? That's it's a thing, transparency. A few weeks ago, I was doing consultancy at a customer um, that wanted to monitor databases mm -hmm. using Xamix HN2, using the database plugin. And they had one concern, what is that agent doing? So we just mm -hmm. grabbed the source code and started looking at the queries that are executed. And within minutes, I was like, well, these are the queries. Yeah, you can the, point your finger at it. This is what the database what doing. Yeah. is being queried of. And yeah, that's, that's really nice, of course. Yeah, that, that sort of ensures the customers that there's no yeah, kind of weird things. business going yeah. on. Yeah, nothing's being sent back to like Zabbix, some centralized Zabbix. <laughs> database where we store customer information. No, we don't do that. And you can, you can just take a look yourself yeah. and, and confirm it yourself. And if we were to do that, I bet people like you and other prominent community members and partners would be quick to notice and point out that, hey, this is And start yelling. Secure. And start yelling very loudly. Yeah. And that's the great benefit of open source. Yeah. All right. Thank you a lot, Brian. It was a real pleasure. We talked about quite a few things, trainings, open source, support, and things like that. And I hope to see you during the summit, maybe with a speech of your own. Uh, I'm thinking of it, actually. No, yeah, no, I'm planning it. I'll poke you a bit if you, if you forget about it. and I'll, I'll get that sure. speech out of yeah, you. And, great. And then, then we'll see you on the stage. And uh, that means our community will also see you relatively soon. Summits in October and maybe yeah. some blog posts or things like that in between, right? Uh, definitely. 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 All right. Thank you. It's been great. a pleasure. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.